evening. Uh, my name is Carly Stanley. I'm a proud Wiradjuri woman, but I was born and raised on Gadigal land. I'd also like to take the opportunity to acknowledge the traditional custodians, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, for the land on which we meet this evening. We also want to recognise the strength, resilience and capacity of First Nations people, which is one of the reasons that brings me here this evening. My people are amazingly resilient, but we face many challenges early in our life. Unfortunately, despite the millions of dollars spent on at-risk children, not enough gets done or it doesn't get done right. This is why my husband and I started Deadly Connections, a charity that intervenes to help Aboriginal people get the best start in their life. At the moment, we've got 17,664 Aboriginal children in out-of-home care across Australia. Aboriginal people only make up 2.8% of the Australian population. I want you to imagine what it would be like to be one of those children. So I just want you to take a moment to close your eyes. Go to a time when you were about four or five years old. And think of a positive experience. Maybe you were eating dinner, having dinner with your family. You've got everyone around the table, sharing food, sharing stories, talking about your day. You come home one day expecting to have that experience. Except this time, there's a caseworker there and they sit you down and they tell you that you're going to be taken from your family. You're going to be removed from the home, from your family and your community, the most important thing in your little world at that time, the only people that you know. You can open your eyes now. How did that feel? A bit difficult. How did that feel? I'm picking on you because you're at the front. <laughs> How did that feel? Traumatic, yeah. So the question I have for you, thankfully that didn't happen to you, but if it did, do you think you'd be standing here today? And if you weren't here today, where do you think you would be? For many Aboriginal people, this is a reality. If you weren't here today and you had experienced that, you may be addicted to drugs or alcohol, you may be trying to reconnect with your family and find your community, or you may be in jail. The facts are shocking. You can see on the slides, um, Aboriginal children are removed at 10 times the rate of non-Aboriginal children. They're also removed at, uh, sorry, I can't see those slides there, <laughs> but the stats above, they're removed at a much higher rate than non-Aboriginal children. And... We're also the most imprisoned people across the world at the moment. Females, Aboriginal women, are the fastest rising prison population in, in internationally at the moment. Uh, I want to tell you a story about a young boy called Keenan. Keenan was eight years old when he was taken into out-of-home care after losing both of his parents. He was taken from his family and community, the family and community that he knew, and moved to another community. He was separated from his two older brothers. So within the space of two years, he lost both of his parents and then also lost his brothers because they were separated and sent to different placements. By 14, he was in jail. Thankfully, little Kenan was able to seek a better life, got married and had two young boys. He also started his own company. As you can see, I'm in a really good place at the moment, being supported by my wife and having two children. But underneath my past and my trauma, still haunts me today. I find it really, really hard as a father trying to do the day-to-day -day things that a father should do because I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. 
<laughs> so I took my shirt off for two reasons. One, to show you some tattoos that are on my arms. So the tattoos you see that are in the front of my forearms are tattoos that I got in prison after <laughs> getting out of prison and turning my life around and being supported by my now wife. We have two young children, and I can proudly show you tattoos of my children. So this is my eldest boy's name, who is three, and my baby now, who just turned two on the weekend. <laughs> These are the tattoos that I got. proud of my husband. He's come so far, but I see every day the struggles that he faces and the challenges that he still has to overcome, no matter how far removed from his childhood he is. Um, yeah, I'm trying not to get upset. I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's you know, it's su such an emotional subject for us because, you know, we live it every day. And one of the reasons that we started this organisation is because we don't want our people to continually face these cycles of disadvantage and the perpetual trauma and incarceration of our people. We want to be able to provide families and parents with the skills that they need. And there's an assumption that, you know, parents inherently have these skills and you don't, particularly for Aboriginal people. So tonight we want you to help us help these children and help their future. Um, I have a quote here that's up, and I'm going to read it out to you guys. That it is much easier to repair. To repair. No, it is easier to build strong children than it is to repair broken adults. And the reason why we chose that particular saying tonight is I speak to you guys from experience. Trying to come in at the back end. And, and, and obliterate me with information about being a parent and a father and trying to navigate a new lifestyle outside of prison and have two dueling informations and trying to keep them is so hard. Um, if there was ever a service like this that was able to support me in being a father and, and being able to know that I'm doing the right thing, I would have ran to it straight away. But instead, I have to know that I'm doing the right thing with the support of my wife and know that I'm going to give my children the right future and by having them skills I can pass that on to other families and other children. Thank you. So, you need $40,000 to help 25 young Aboriginal children have a better start to their lives. But if you're feeling generous and want to make a bigger impact, for every $1,600 raised, we can help one more child. No child should have to endure what Keenan faced. These children may not be yours or mine, but they're ours. They're human beings. So I'm calling to you as fellow Australians, help us help them. Thank you.